Welcome to um, GHGA webinar. Uh, maybe you know the uh, webinar today is a part of um, is a part of um, our mini series on biological data visualization. We start this mini series with an introductory um, webinar. It was a quite theoretical part uh, about um, best practice and good techniques. And then we followed up with a more practical part. We teach you some basics of uh, data visualization with both R and Python. And today we continue on this topic. Um, uh, we have an expert with us. We have a two one. He will uh, show us and introduce us um, some uh, R and bioconductor packages that himself have uh, developed for um, for data visualization, uh, visualization of uh, biological and omics data. And uh, before we get started, I would like uh, to say a few words about GHGA. We are the German Human Genome Phenome Archive, and our mission is to provide a platform for um, human omics data sharing in a GDPR compliant manner. So we would like to provide um, to provide clinical omnis data for secondary and, and make it available for secondary use in research. And in doing that, we hope to um, we hope to contribute to biological discovery and replication and to provide a translation of this research in science into the genomic medicine. And maybe you can imagine you cannot do it uh, alone. Um, Diverse uh, communities are involved um, are, are involved in that, are um, involved in helping us uh, to setting up this uh, infrastructure. Uh, for example, biologists, geneticists, clinicians, um, physicians, and of course, also patients. And this is the reason we are uh, bringing on this webinar series, because we would like to offer um, a place uh, for communication. We will allow to uh, to offer a place where the communities, the different communities, can get together and um, um, and learn from each other and also discuss these topics uh, we are interested in, like uh, today. And that is also the reason we are organizing also other events. Uh, for example, our uh, data protection uh, course or our lecture series. For example, next week, uh, Sarah Teichman will talk about advances in data driving biomedicine. And after the summer break, we will uh, carry on with our webinar and we will have with us our uh, free data um, experts, Anandi Yapan and Carolyn Mawa. So if you are interested in this, uh, in our lecture, lecture series, or you will sign up for our webinar, you just uh, visit our um, webpage, ghga.de slash events. And uh, now I will like to welcome our speaker today, and I want to introduce him, uh, Chugan Gu. He has obtained uh, his uh, PhD in life science uh, at the University Nanjing. I, I hope I can uh, pronounce it right. And he uh, signs uh, 2020, uh, 2013, he's bioinformatician at the KFZ and in city in Heidelberg. And he's also, um, he's also an active earth package developer, has developed several R and bioconductor packages widely used in bioinformatics community. And two of uh, his packages, cycle site and complex heat maps, have over 3 million downloads and 10,000 paper uh, citations. And today we have the pleasure to have two one with us, and he will demonstrate both basic and advanced um, uses of his packages with real world uh, examples. So I can I cannot wait anymore. Um, Welcome to Guang. It's a pleasure to, to have you with us, and I hand over to you. Thank you very much. So hello, everyone, and thanks for uh, coming to this web, uh, webinar. 
Uh, my name is um, Zhu Gongbu, and um, now I'm currently I'm working as a bioinformatician in DFZ and uh, NZT. So I um, today I will talk about several uh, R packages that I developed for um, mainly for data visualization on biological data. And I developed quite a lot or quite some R packages. So here list some of my packages and. So there are some packages for data visualization, some packages for data analysis, some packages for like working with the clusters for development, like for biological data sets. And today I will mainly talk about these five packages, Circleize, Complex Heat Map, Spiralize, Enrich Heat Map, and Hypercurve. So these five um, are packages mainly for uh, data visualization. First, and I will talk about circleize, spiralize, and hypercurve. These three R packages because they uh, these three R packages are developed um, with very similar, um, say, framework or um, implementation or or ways. And so these three R packages they visualize data um, in different uh, types of layout. So, for example, circleize visualizes data in a circular layout. Spiralize um, uses this um, sp uh, spiral layout. Have a curve uses this uh, one dimensional have a curve layout. So for all these three packages, um, there are like some transformation between the normal X Y Cartesian um, co uh, coordinate systems and to and um, the this um, transformed circular or spiralized um, spiral uh, layout. So for example, this example for the um, circular layout. There will be a standard x y coordinate where users um, use different. Uh, they add different graphics like points, lines, rectangles, and then there's will be a circular layout which like transformation from the original x y coordinate to this circular layout, and finally the the graphics is is drawn on let's say on a PDF or on a graphics or Windows. And the design for these three packages is users only need to be, let's say they only need to pretend they are in this uh, standard X, Y uh, coordinate and they just use normal like functions to add lines, uh, points by specifying the X, Y coordinate. And this transformation is automatically applied. And the finally, they will see the final like circular plot or a spiral plot or hypercurve plot. So this transformation is like internally uh, hidden and users are here and the, and the output is here. So this is like the general idea of these three packages. And all, this, all these three packages, they of course, first they implement this um, layout transformation and the second they uh, implement many, many, I mean, almost all, let's, let's say uh, the low level graphics, which are points, lines, uh, polygons, like by using or by different combination of these low level graphics, then you can generate very complicated um, plots. So on the left, this is like a demonstration of uh, adding, I think, uh, lines and also like very different um, configurations of adding lines and segments uh, in this uh, spiral layout and in this uh, hypercurve layout, which is like one dimensional line or one dimensional axis folding in two dimensional space. And the hypercurve, uh, the hypercurve package in, uh, supports like adding points, like uh, areas on this one dimensional axis. So in theory, like all kinds, all types of complicated graphics can be uh, combined just by using, by combining points, lines, these low level graphics. And um, by this, com by uh, transforming between different coordinate systems and or by, or by, com or by, uh, transforming between different layouts actually like for example in a circle layout the plot, the plot or the figure will be much prettier than the original ones so these are two examples so on top and it's not it's, uh, I think this is the like a straight um, belt I would say straight belt in the standard XY coordinate and some like curves and if you convert them to circular layout, or the, I mean, if you convert them to a circular layout, really they will be much prettier. Okay, so I will 
just give you many examples with real world data to show um how these packages and um, and how they have to like to reveal some patterns from your data with different variations and um, circleized so now there are three examples and um, so um the circle is mostly used in realizing gen genomic data like every circle uh, circle the circle corresponds to the genome and the circle is split by say sectors and each sector corresponds to one chromosome so can you can see the chromosome one chromosome two chromosome six and chromosome 17 and normally what there will be an outer track it is called the ideogram which show different uh, different um sections or different parts in the in the chromosome and there will be additional tracks so this is the one advantage of the circular visualization that, that you can add many, many tracks where each track corresponds to one specific data type. So for this example, um, so maybe this uh, uh, blue red track means um, some, let's say, um, high, uh, high methylation or low methylation. And there's another unique uh, feature for this, for this circular uh, plot is in inside the circle. You can actually add these lines to visualize the uh, the link or the correspondence or associations between like two events in the genome. And in the middle, actually, you can you can add many many different tracks. So this plot in the middle visualizes the um, the global distribution of um, a certain type of regions. So here it visualizes the list of differentially methylated regions. And there are hypermethylation, which, which means methylation is higher in tumor samples, for example. And blue means the methylation is lower in tumor samples. And this track is called the rainfall plot. Um, so the x-axis are the location on the on the chromosomes. And the y, so this is the y-axis. It's the radical direction, the y-axis. And the value on the y-axis are the distance to the neighbor uh, regions. So if if a region is close is closer to its neighbor regions, then it will have a smaller y value, which will be have a small uh, y coordinate. And if they are far from uh, far from the neighbors, it will it will have a very high, big uh, y value, which will make this point up quite above uh, on on the top on the top part of this uh, of this plot region. So if you see there's like a cluster, or it's called a rain drop or rainfall in the plot, it means there's um, a cluster of regions in this um, in this area in the genome in the chromosome, and there will be other two additional tracks. Um, so for this uh, point track, actually, because like if you look at uh, chromosome seven, actually it is still very short for the whole um, the for the whole chromosome seven, and you will see the points are quite densely uh, overlapped. So we can add two other tracks, which is like the, the density, I call it the genomic density, which is like estimate the genome into windows and, and calculate how many regions are in each window. So this means, for example, the red corresponds to this red uh, red point, which are the hypermethylated regions. So we can always say, okay, there's a peak here in this in this area in the genome on, on this chromosome. And you can see there's a peak of DMR, hypo DMR on chromosome seven here. So this means uh, in the circular layout, you can add multiple tracks to correspond to uh, different types of, let's say, genomic information. And the last plot is like a genome variation on some, I think, bird um, organism species. Basically, that's like many, many different uh, genomic signals like the coverage, CG content, blah, 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 which you can all integrate into one circular plot. And the next three uh, examples on the left, this is another, uh, let's say, unique feature for the circular validation, which is called the chord diagram. So they use these uh, links to visualize um, associations between two things. So you might know this kind of plot. It's called the Sankey plot, which visualizes the association between one category to the other category. So this is this type of same. Sankey diagram uses this, this standard XY uh, layout and the circular, the core diagram uh, uses this special, um, the circular layout, basically, which is the same, very similar as the Sankey diagram. So there are two categories, one category on the top, one category at the bottom. And on each category, there are several, let's say, features, and we can realize 
like the amount of um, feature this one, this feature, how, how they correspond to a feature seven in let's say the top category. And for the real world data set, the left plot visualize something called the uh, chromatin state transitions between let's say normal samples and tumor samples. And um, so if you know this uh, chromatin uh, uh, modification, um, you will know um, like with different uh, chrom with using five or seven uh, different chromatin modification mod modifiers, you will have you can do this chromatin uh, state analysis on the whole genome. So there will be some regions in the genome are marked as active regions. Some some regions in the genome are marked as um, repre repressed uh, regions. So this plot realizes how the um, the activity of the of the of the of the genome how they change between uh, normal samples to uh, tumor samples. So, for example, and the weights of each sector corresponds to the total weight, total total amount of these active regions or repressed regions or the regions with norm. We don't know whether it's active or repressed. So we call it the fifteen the other the other regions, and we can see, for example, the uh, the the seven. I think seven means active promoter or active enhancer. We can see it is active in normal and almost half they become, they lost their activity in the tumor samples. So this is, uh, I think it's one way to realize this chromatin state transition between two um, two conditions. And we can also add more tracks um, and outside of this uh, transition plot, transition circular plot. So for example, this uh, red blue track corresponds to the messaging change of these regions with different states. And this uh, uh, green, uh, orange track, I think I cannot remember exactly. I think the expression difference of the genes that are associated to these corresponding uh, regions with these different um, chromatin activities. And then in the middle, it's like a circular heat map. And on the right side is um, a variation of some um, selected uh, subregions in the genome. So you can see on the most outside as a whole genome and it only realized some, you can see this small selected regions in the genome. And these lines uh, are like, like correspondence between these uh, subregions and the original positions on the genome. And these are, and, and this track are just normal uh, data coordinate where you can add um, self-defined graphics in it. So here I just use point. Of course you can use lines, rectangles, other graphics to create a very complicated uh, plot. And so um, besides the use in biological data analysis, there are some also it is used for other types of data. Uh, on the left, it's uh, a variation of um, uh, immigrants between uh, countries. So you can see it realize how and how the populations immigrate from these countries to the US. And I think this is a chief. So you can see the dynamics of the immigration of world population. And on the right side, it's like a violation of the pie. And this, this plot is used as a cover of a music uh, album. So I think the album is called pie. So someone used circular package to generate such a uh, figure and use this as the, the, the figure of this the music album. So it looks quite uh, quite beautiful. So basically there are 10 sectors, corresponds to one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, nine. And it is constructed, for example, you know, 3.14. So let's say this is one and one, the next digit is four. So one connect to four and the four connect to one and the one connect to three and connect to nine, connect to two, connect to six. So I think it contains, I don't know, 10,000 digit, so it looks like, it just looks very beautiful. And there's another very famous uh, usage of supply is there's a study which uh, studied the epigenomics change between um, twins, where uh, let's say one brother is in the space and the other is on the ground. So this study um, um, analyzed the difference between these two twins and with different um, types of omics data. And in the paper, there's one this like landscape uh, plot, and basically integrate all different uh, data types. 
And for Spiralize, I will keep it to the end of this talk because I don't know whether I, I have enough time to go over other plots. And the spiral, Spiralize plot is not as important as other packages, so I'll just leave it as the last one. Okay, have a curve. And so have a curve is a very special curve, which is like um, a folding, um, a one-dimensional axis to into two, two, in two dimensional space in a very special way. So let's say this is a, a line, which you can think as a one dimensional X axis. And um, like it has different uh, levels of folding. So let's say this is called level, um, level three, level four, five and six. So you can see when the level increases, the this folding becomes more and more dense, but the patterns are the same. That means the, 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 the patterns of folding are the same. And you can see if it's a one uh, dim one dimensional axis, you can see how the point uh, traverses in this one dimensional uh, uh, axis. And there's one very useful feature for the hip curve is if um, if two points are close are close to, close to each other in the one dimensional axis, they are very likely to also be very close in a two dimensional um, in a in a two di two dimensional space. So, for example, if you just holding this line um, straight, if there are two points are close to each other in this straight line, and after after you fold the line um, as have a curve, these two points they are also close in a in a two dimensional um, space. So it is very useful to realize genomic data because the genome can be thought as a one a one dimensional axis with very very long x axis. And if we can fold this one dimensional variable access into two, dim two, dim two dimensional space, there will be some features can be, let's say, highlighted or can be emphasized in a two dimensional space. I'll just give you several examples. Um, so the left one is a relation of genes on chromosome one. So each, uh, let's say, each segment is a gene. So you can see, I mean, the left plot is not very useful. It's just for demonstration of the curve. So this is the say the genome, and different colors are different genes. You, so you can see there are some genes are very long, some genes are very short, and in some regions in in this chromosome there's no uh, no gene. So it's centromere or some other unsequenced um oh, some other regions in the chromosome. The plot in the middle is a relation of um CG content uh, on chromosome one. So the red the GC, the GC percent or CG uh, GC percent like the percent of G and C in a certain window. So the red means high GC content, high GC percent, and the green corresponds to low GC uh, percent. So also just, this is the start of the chromosome one, and this is the end of chromosome one. So we can see, and in the first quarter of chromosome, of chromosome one, um, the GC percent are quite high. Like here, the GC, the GC percent are quite low, and also here are quite low. So this is like global distribution of the GC percent on one chromosome. And the plot on the right as the variation of um, methylation on one chromosome. So the red corresponds to fully methylated, like 100% methylation, and the blue corresponds to uh, no methylation, unmethylated. And this uh, light, uh, this light red regions correspond to the regions which are like uh, intermediate methylated. So we can see first the low lay or the unmethylated regions are like very small, like this uh, blue dots, very small. And these uh, fully highly methylated regions are like the bigger. And there are also like these um, um, uh, this intermediate uh, methylated regions. So if you correspond this plot to like genes, actually, especially, for example, this block and this block. So these gray uh, regions here are the genes. If you can see very, uh, very clearly, we can see this. Normally, the gene bodies are very fully methylated. You can see very red, and this is a gene. And here, gene, gene, very red. And for this light pink or light red, they are like correspond to let's say uh, intergenic regions. And actually, you can also see this uh, unmethylated, this blue, small blue dots. It corresponds to the overlap to the TSS of genes. And this three examples realize the different uh, histone modifications. On the left, it's the HJK27 acetylation, which is a marker for enhancers. 
in the, in the middle, H3K for trimethylation is a marker for active promoters. And the last one, H3K, uh, H3K36 trimethylation is a marker for active um, gene bodies, active genes. So they first they have different uh, um, patterns. Another thing is this gray area corresponds to the, 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 gene, the gene bodies. So uh, they have different um, different um, unique patterns. So for example, H3K4 trimethylation, they are like very, very dense, very, very small for the H3K27 methylation enhancer marker. They are also small, but they are sometimes they, they are quite bigger than the promoter, active promoter marker. And then for the last one, H3K36 translation, they are quite larger than the previous two, and then they overlap to the to the gene bodies. So in this in the third plot, if the peak, let's say peak for this hit mark, if they overlap to the gene body, I just change the color to pupil. So you can see most of the this marker overlap to the gene bodies. So, so it means we can use hyper curve to give you a direct visual visual impression of how different histone marks how they distribute on the genome and how they overlap to other genomic features such as gene bodies. And this is the violation on the methylation difference. And so in this plot, there are four four panels. Each panel corresponds to one subtype of brain tumor. So one sub subtype one, subtype two, subtype three, subtype four, and we can compare. Uh, and they all compare against a normal uh, a normal sample. So this the uh, um, orange means the the, the methylation is higher in the tumor samples, and if it's uh, blue, it means methylation is lower in the tumor samples. So actually, we can compare the four different tumor subtypes. And actually, actually, we can see this one has a global, very global low methylation, low, low, lower methylation or hypomethylation compared to normal samples. And these subtypes are different from the other three. And of course, there are some regions are hypomethylated. And then we can also see there are some regions are hypermethylated, which means the methylation is higher in tumor samples compared to the normal samples. So this gives you a very global and direct violation of, um, of this genomic difference and also the details of such differences. And the last one, I think it will be very useful um, to use hyper curve to make some QC um, QC plots. So in this example, these two are two replicates of uh, um, of, of this uh, histone modification, H3K4 ME1. So these two correspond to one same histone modification, but two replicates. And and so this uh, red are the, are the signals. Um, uh, are the signals in the genome and the pupils are the peaks. So if you use peak calling, some peak calling tool, you will have a peaks. So these are the, the, the pupils, the pupil regions that have to correspond to the peaks. And actually we can see there are quite big difference between these two replicates. The first one may look good, but the second one is definitely not a good one. It, the background you can see is has a systematic, very high uh, background noise. Um, so if you do the QC in the normal way, using some tools, give you some values, um, even though it will be not easy to say this replicate um, is, has some problems. But if you use such global hypercurvalization, it is very straightforward to see this replicate has some problem. And this one might also, because the background noise is still quite high. Okay, the next package complex hit bar package. I think this is the the most used uh, package of mine. It uh, makes a uh, heat map. So the heat map, I think it's the most important validation method for omics data, because normally we deal with a data, the data where we deal with are like a table, a table like or tabular or rectangle. And here, the, the, the heat map is the best way to realize such data. So the complex heat map makes of course it makes heat map it also makes very complex complex heat maps a complex heat map and so of course it by default it will it uh, produces a single heat map with many many it, it supports it allows to add many many different annotations this, this can be called annotations and so this, if you do some omics data you will have a lot of um, different uh, patient data patient annotation data metadata or whatever you call it and you can use it on the top of your heat map to, to see the cor correspondence of different meta information and the patterns in your matrix. 
Um, there's one important feature I think very which is very useful is um, is to split the heat map. Um, so these two plots are the same, are based on the same data set. So on the left uh, is the plot I regenerated with the original data, and the plot on the left are the original figure from the paper. And it is a visualization on the methylation data. So this is a matrix of methylation with like a one hundred more than one hundred samples, and with um, five thousand CPG sites, and this is the methylation profile. So basically, it's very similar, and. Um, so in, in my version, I additionally add um, several more uh, several other information, which is like, which is the distance of the CPG side to the TSS. So the distance to the nearest TSS, and uh, the annotation of the CPG side. So whether the CPG site in, is in the CPG island or in the um, CPG uh, CGI shore or CGI uh, CGI C or shelf or C. So all the CPT sites are categorized into, are put into four different categories and the heat map is split by the CPT annotations. You can see split into uh, four pieces. And if you compare these four different pieces, actually you can see very good correspondence that if the CPT is in the CGI, you can see they are very close to the gene, near, nearest genes. And the methylation here in the controls are normally basically are unmethylated. And if the CPG site is in the shelf or C, um, the CPG site are very far from the nearest gene, and these CPG sites are fully are very highly methylated in the control samples. So with splitting the heat map by some criterions, you will have you can find some more interesting uh, patterns from your data. And there's another feature of complex heat map is that you can you can concatenate you can link multiple heat maps to very easily to link the correspondence between different um, different data. So in this example, we have this is our data set. There are like fifty or sixty samples, and there's one uh, one question for this data set is uh, it has contamination from other tissues, and we don't know which tissue um, they contaminate with they are contaminated with. So what I did is I, so the, each line is a gene. I, I use the GTEx data, which are the gene expression data for normal samples for various uh, human uh, tissues. And I also used uh, TCJ data, which are the, the cancer data. And I use the same set of gene and I just make, I made three heat maps and I link them. So each row is a gene in three different cohorts. And if you just compare the three heat maps, actually you can see very easy these uh, these patterns. For, so for example, these samples, they are more coming from these tissues. And these samples, they are more coming from these tissues. So these tissues are mainly from the column. So we can see these samples, the main component, they are column tissues. And these samples, the main component are, are these, with these names, these tissues. And so it's another example of to use uh, the heat map splitting. Um, on the left, it's like it's like a, a, an unsupervised uh, clustering of some expression data. So for this data, um, there are four subtypes, and I uh, I additionally um, applied k-means clustering on the on the rows. So there are four um, clusters on the rows and the four clusters on on the columns, and we can see very easy, very clearly the patterns of this. Let's say we can call these as signatures. So the signature one, uh, signatures in group one, signature, signatures in group two, they have their unique patterns in different subgroups. So you can see very clearly. And on the right side is also a heat map. And so this now this matrix is quite special compared to others because for the other heat maps, and I have introduced so far, the hit, the matrix are complete. There are no NM values, but in this one, there are many, many NM values. So this plot realizes the, uh, let's say the, um, the science, the scientific influence between two countries based on the literature data or citation data. So how a country cites the paper from another country. So this kind of science, um, scientific influence between from one country to another country. 
So we can see not every pair of countries have uh, enough number of uh, papers to calculate such inference. So there will, there will be a lot of NA values in this matrix. And um, by choosing prop uh, method to partition all the countries, actually you can have a very nice final visualization of such global academic or scientific inference, international inference. So you can see actually this group uh, countries, they are like uh, um, developed Western countries, countries, for example, the US, Germany, France, and this group are African countries, these are Asian countries, um, the Middle East countries or regions, and is the, the Eastern uh, European. So actually by, if, you, if you're using, using heat map splitting, some patterns can be very nicely emphasized or highlighted. Another usage for the complex heat map packet is to realize mutations, which is also like um, known as oncoprint. For the oncoprint, realize the mutation pattern of a list of genes in a list of samples. And it's mainly for realizing such so-called the mutual ex exclusivity of mutations. So for example, the KRAS is mutated in these samples and uh, this genes is mutated in these samples. And these two genes, the mutation of these two genes uh, has mutual exclusivity in different patients. And in the complex heat map package, it allows the user to self-define all these different graphics for different types of mutations. So for this one, there are three different types of mutations. So there might be some more mutations where user can design their own graphics to represent different mutations or genomic alterations in general. And this is also a type of validation very used, very very widely used in omics um, studies, which is like a, a landscape or global uh, visualization of the data. So there are normally um, a, con a, a con concatenation of different types of um, information. So for th in this case, each row is, let's say, a specific region. Um, uh, the, the, this is uh, for subtypes, for subtypes, um, hypomethylated hypo regions and hypermethylated regions. So there are eight different types of regions and you can, you can perform analysis to calculate many, many different statistics for these four list of regions, for example, number of regions and how they, the distribution of how they are close to the genes, TSS, uh, how they overlap to genes, like how many overlap to uh, promoter, how many overlap to gene body, how many are in the genic annotation to the CPG island and how they associate to other genomic features, how they associate to other genomic, uh, the chromatin states, blah, 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 blah. So you can basically add all these different um, genomic um, statistic or genomic information just by connecting them uh, with using the complex heat map. And you can correspond each row. So each row they always correspond to the same thing. And these are two specific use of the um, this package, which just to demonstrate um, this package is very, it's highly customizable. You basically, as long as the data is rectangular and you basically you can draw anything and all the heat map body, this part is completely can be um, self um, customized. The upset plot, I will just skip this part and the upset plot and the 3D heat map. Uh, so the 3D heat map is basically is only to show um, this package has the ability to generate such plot, but I think in practice, the 3D realization is not recommended um, for data analysis. Okay, the next one, I think it's the last one, the enriched heat map. This is also a heat map realization uh, package, but it visualizes a very specific type of, um, of data. Um, so um, it realizes how, for example, how the methylation are enriched around TSS or how the a certain histone modification are enriched in TSS or enriched in gene body. So in this plot, and there's also a target region in the middle, which can be TSS or any other type of genomic regions. And then there's another level of data, which is the genomic signal. So in the, in the left um, plot, the signal is uh, the the is this uh, um, chromatin modification H3K4 ME3, 
and the and the second heat map is a uh, DNA methylation, and and these two enriched heat, heat map can also be concatenated to normal heat maps. So the third one is basically as a normal heat map with an uh, of gene expression. So you can link these three heat maps, and each row is a gene. Each of the gene. So this is the expression of this gene. This is the DNA methylation around the TSS of this gene, and this is the uh, H3K4 trimethylation signal around this gene. And you, you can also do splitting. And so in this plot, you can see um, for these genes, um, if the TSS are lowly methylated, which is blue, blue means unmethylated, very lowly methylated, they have a very high uh, H3K4 ME3 signal, and the genes are normally highly expressed. And for the other part, it's a reversed, has a reverse pattern. And we can also see, like for these highly expressed genes, there are two different patterns. One is the regions are like more to the um, left side or more to the upstream of TSS, like this part, and also this blue line. And there's another category of genes where the methylation are more into the gene body here, which corresponds to the uh, histone modification everywhere. And this is a very complicated uh, relation of um, of um, gene expression, methylation, and four different uh, histone modifications. So this kind of plot looks very huge, but it gives a very clear message to the readers if they have the patient to read the plot. And so the genes, gene expression, and this is the, the correlation between the methylation and the gene expression. And this is the absolute level of methylation, and this is the methylation difference between these two groups. There are two groups. And same for the other, other heat maps. So the correlation between gene expression and this heat modification signal, the absolute level and the difference. And so I'll just give you a very quick uh, descri description, which is we can see if the gene is highly expressed, it and um, the TSS always overlap to the CVG island and um, and uh, the TSS is only methylated, and we can see the negative correlation between methylation expression and such correlated region are on the border of this um, lowly uh, methylated region, and they are also on the border of the CBG island. So you can see very clearly for this correspondence. Another interesting thing is for this histone modification, we can see so this is a correlation. So we can see on the border it shows positive. Uh, correlation and in the middle it shows a negative correlation so it's very interesting and this um, in the map can also realize um, discrete signals so so far all these signals are continuous methylation is a continuous has is continuous value the different histone modification signals are also continuous so it can also realize discrete uh, values that is uh, that are assigned to the genome so this is a histone, uh, this is a chromatin state. So the chromatin, the chromatin state are discrete. So in this example, there are seven discrete values for five dif uh, for seven different chromatin states. And this package can realize such discrete um, signals. So you can see these are the active uh, promoter, active TSS, and these are the bivalent TSS. And you can also link to other um, other data just by uh, linking to other heat maps. And so this is not a very good example here. What I want to say is um, you can split um, the heat maps by some uh, criteria. So in this example, let's only look at the first two heat maps. They are enhancers. So now the middle, they are not TSS, but they are enhancers. So enhancer one, enhance, each row corresponds to one enhancer and two conditions, white type and knockout. And they are split into three categories where and there's enhancer in knockout, no enhancer in white type. So ups, um, absent in white type, both or only exist in white type, not in the uh, not in the knockout. So you you can you can you can split um, you can split the um, by certain criteria and and so ideally I would I would like to see if also there are some difference in method attack and. Uh, signal or methylation, but for this example, I cannot see any difference. Okay, now let's go back to the spiral plot, which is not very used in um, data analysis. So during the corner, 
there is a plot on the left side, we realize the daily increase of corona cases. And this plot has a very big debate on Twitter or on the internet, which they, they say this is uh, not a proper way to realize such data. And, and in my opinion, it is might not be very proper, but it is a very, I would say very, it is okay because the spiral sh shape of the spiral actually so if you read, I mean, this plot is not for academic papers. It is for um, um, the New York New York Times this magazine. And the readers are normal people. Actually, this spiral direction actually gives the reader some, um, makes them anxious about the daily increase of corona cases. And, and I, on the right side, I just in, um, in, improved such realization just by using different graphics and and that's it. And for the spiral validation, it basically mapped data to such a uh, spiral. There's one unique feature for the spiral visualization is you can realize uh, periodic patterns. So for example, every circle corresponds to one year. And uh, so this year one, year two, and on the same position on the circle with the same degree, they correspond to the same day or same week on that year. So you can see this is the same week on different years. This is the Friday, this is a weekend, this is a working, this is a from Monday to uh, Friday. So the figure is the, the daily download of the GG Pro 2 package. And then we can see normally people, they just work very actively from Monday to Friday and they, they do not work mostly on the weekend. And they have a, a break um, in the summer, like July and August, they have a big break and um, see. In the Christmas and the New Year, and something very interesting you can see we can see there's a very big activity in November and in the beginning of December. So they work harder before uh, the Christmas vacation. So, and another one I want to show is um, because in the spiral, as you can see, this is the y-axis, and this spiral line can be thought as x-axis. So you can see in spiral visualization, the x-axis are very very long which means you can actually can realize this very long things. So in this example, it realized um, an evolutionary tree, which contains more than 50,000 species. And you can see each species can be distinguished in the spiral. And just imagine if you plot such dendrogram or such tree on the normal X, Y uh, coordinate system, you, I mean, these spaces, they just overlap to each other and it's very difficult to distinguish individual uh, species. But for the uh, spiral validation, they can be distinguished. And you can see these different uh, categories or families of different organisms or different species. The species. So last plot is uh, because I'm a bioinformatician, so I'm very interested in different program languages. And this visualizes the, uh, the activity of development of four different programming languages, the Python, R, Perl, and PHP. And the dot the, 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 the dot corresponds to the activity of the development of this uh, programming language. And you can see actually the R, which um, our like people like me, bioinformatician, use a lot, actually is, is a relatively small language compared to the other uh, three ones. And you can see the Perl and P uh, on the Python, so the Python is more active than Perl. And you can see there are like two period, is it like the beginning of this language? And there's the very active um, range in around 10 years um, for the, both for Python and Perl. And in the recent years, the development becomes um, less active compared to these years. And, and there's one interesting thing for the PHP, so PHP, now it's thought as a very old uh, program language, so, but actually it is very actively and developed. You can see the black dots are still very big. Even in this closer uh, years, it's also still very actively and uh, developed for the PHP uh, program language. Okay, so that's all that I want to share today. Yeah. And um, if you, um, I mean, you, you are, of course, very willing to use these packages. And if you have questions, you can um, directly write me an email. So I normally I reply all my emails. And you can also act on GitHub 
uh, but on GitHub, um, I do I, I do not promise to <laughs> reply um, every um, ticket because I, I don't have that much of time, but I reply all my emails. Okay, thank you for listening. And I can I can also say something about my future plan of uh, yeah, of course. My uh, circularized package and the complex hitma package. So circularized package was developed um, eleven years ago. Like I started to develop it, um, from the first year. I was in depth with it, and I was not very proficient with R programming. And and so one of my plans to rewrite the circularized package to make the package better because now it is implemented with this very, let's say that if you know R, the base R graphics uh, engine. Uh, which makes and and also some of the code are quite old and not um efficient and which makes now if if I want to add some more features it is very difficult. So one of my plans to completely rewrite a uh, circularized package with the the grid if you know grid the grid graphics uh, engine, and for the complex hit my package I I also plan to rewrite it if I have time in the future. Because there are some like advanced uh, features which are very difficult and um, for users to use. I mean, for me, it also would take me a lot of time to implement new features because um, I also need to read the documentation and to recall what I did for this package. So, um, in the future, if I have time, and I will also consider to reconstruct the complex heat map package. Yeah, so that's it. Well, then um, I will to thank you to Wang again, and thank you also for uh, GAJ help us, and thank you our audiences for the interest in our webinars. So bye bye, have a nice afternoon. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>